Hello everyone, welcome to the Monday forecast. So let's get started with the Euro and the US dollar. Uh, what I'm seeing right here is I'm seeing that we had a descending structure and then we pushed to the downside. So that is a common pattern on the Euro pairs where we get this. <clears throat> Let me also mark it out. So we get a descending and then we push to the downside. And at this point, I was looking for a flag or maybe a break and retest entry to the inside bar. But what happened, we got an aggressive retrace. So I can replay this. At this point, I was looking for a nice tight flag, something like this. But we got this aggressive retrace, which signals to me that we will probably get either a larger range so I am expecting either this larger range or I am expecting a nice reversal and then maybe look for that nice flag to go long. If we do start to range right here, I will consider maybe taking a flag, but it really needs to be a wider, wider range because of the wick and the aggressive retrace. I need to see that larger wider range so also what i'm looking for is i'm looking for if we get another smaller descending and then a reversal to the upside this is also a high probability pattern where we get this smaller descending inside of a larger descending structure and then we reverse to the upside so definitely something to keep in mind <clears throat> also if we start to ascend I will look for a reversal to a downside and a trade to go short. And if we continue down with a nice impulse, I will look for a flag or I will look for a break and retest to the inside bar, which would be this candle. So the inside bar is a candle that hasn't broken the prior candle high, uh, sorry, prior candle low or the high, which would be this one. And that would be my entry level. So definitely I'm looking also for this nice trend to start. And if I see a trend starting, I'm looking for that short trade. That's about it for EU. Let's now switch over to the Euro and the Japanese Yen. So very similar story right here, but not as aggressive of a retrace as on the Euro and the US dollar. So what I, I'm seeing is that we had, we had a descending structure right here so we were clearly descending breaking the lows retracing breaking the lows retracing and then we pushed to the downside so very common pattern and usually tends to start a trend to a downside we got a nice large impulse but then we got this sort of an aggressive retrace on this candle this candle signal to me indecision so at this point I am seeing if we will maybe get that wider range and then a nice flag. I am looking for that, but the range really, really needs to be wide and the price action needs to be clean. Also what I'm seeing, what I would really like to see is a nice impulse down, so nice continuation and then a flag or maybe a break and retest trade. That would be really, really high probability. If we start to descend, I will look for a reversal, something like this. Or if we start to ascend, I will look for a reversal to the downside, of course. If we get this sort of a V, then I will look for a range and impulse to the upside and a trade to go long. So this is also a high probability pattern when we get a V and a range, then we continue in the direction of the second V leg. But that's about it. Not really anything uh, special happening. As I said, we have a descending and then an impulse down. So that is a common pattern on the Euro pairs, which usually tends to, in my, in my experience, start a trend to the downside. So let's see if we will get that nice trend. But currently, as things stand, this doesn't look that good. And it's Monday, so Mondays and Tuesdays are predominantly range bound. And I need to be a bit more careful trading on Monday and Tuesday. And I'm waiting for a bit more out of my setups. So let's now switch over to the Aussie pairs. 
I was in a short trade right here, which I have now exited. So I discussed this one on the prior forecast. Uh, we could, this one actually passed me my FTMO. So we got the large impulse down, small pullback, no momentum shift in the pullback. We got another candle, clean close. So this was a textbook trade. It can't get better than this. Placed a pending short order, got tagged in by uh, just a wick. And then the price shot to the downside. And I did exit the trade on the market close. So on Friday at 8 p.m. I exited my trade because of the overall market situation with the war in Ukraine. I didn't want to hold over the weekend because of the gaps and stuff like that. So I did exit it for 10.3%, which is definitely awesome. Uh, but if I would have stayed in, I would have made, let's see, 14% or something like that. But uh, again, this was a really, really textbook awesome trade and really happy with the percentage. Uh, so then what happened when the market opened? So we continued to the downside with some really nice large momentum. We got a small pullback and no momentum shift. Then we continued down some more. And let me take this back. So at this point, I was waiting for that large impulse down for that continuation of the trend. As we can see, we are heavily, heavily trending to the downside. And when I saw this candle, I did have a pending short order at this inside bar. Then we continue down. At this point, I still had a pending short order. I didn't mind this wick. And then what happened? Well, we shot even more to the downside. And after this candle, I was no longer happy to just enter on a short trade like this because then th that would show me a momentum shift. So what is a momentum shift? Well, that is one candle that engulfs the prior three candles or more. So for me, it's either uh, that it engulfs two or three candles or that it is really, really large. So that is a momentum shift for me. And as you can see here, if this candle that would tag me in on this inside bar would print, then it would engulf the prior three candles and show me a clear momentum shift. And also on the Aussie and US dollar, I don't like taking this larger retraces. So this was, let, let me see just, this was, I think, so yeah, this was a 25 pip retrace. So definitely too big for me. And I wanted to see a nice ascending to the entry level, or I wanted to see a nice tight flag. So I stayed out of this one and it's good that I stayed out of that because we got that momentum shift. This candle would have tagged me in. So it was really, really good that I followed my plan. And this candle would have stopped me out. And currently what I'm seeing is, so we broke the low, retraced, we broke the high, retraced, left a huge wick, and then we continued to the downside. So at this point, this is just signaling to me a range. So we did then break the low retrace also. What I'm expecting now is I'm expecting to see that range. So I am expecting that larger range because we, as I said, broke the low retrace, broke the high retrace, broke the low retrace. As far as the current price action is telling me. So I'm sitting on my hands waiting for that range. If we get a large impulse down, I will look for a flag, but I need to see conviction. So this is showing me a weakness to the upside, this huge wick. So I do like that one, but I don't like that we broke the high. So this was a counter trend move. If we continue down with some large momentum, I will look for a short trade, but it really needs to show me some clean, some clean price action. If we start to descend, I will look for a nice reversal to the upside. And this reversal really needs to be large because of this huge, huge downtrend. I need to see the price really convict uh, to the upside. So really show me some conviction that we are going to reverse. Also, what can happen? We can get an ascending and then a reversal to the downside. I found that this sort of price action does usually happen where we get a huge downtrend, then we get an ascending and then we continue to the downside and continue with the overall downtrend. So definitely something to keep in mind. 
Uh, also, we can get this V range, push up, and then look for that long trade. Uh, also, if we get the large impulse up, I will look for a flag. Then that would be a reversal from a descending structure. But it really needs to be large. It really needs to be a big, big impulse for me to even consider taking any trades. That's about it for the Aussie and the US dollar. And now for my last pair. So the Aussie and the Japanese yen. Let me take this one back also. So what I was seeing, I was seeing a really, really large, large downtrend. You can see these legs, huge, huge legs down. Small pause here, then another huge leg down, small pullback and another huge leg down. Let me replay this price action. What I saw here is I saw a nice small pullback, no momentum shift. So this is textbook, textbook for the trend to continue down. Really, really nice, clean price action. Then we pushed down. This was not enough of a break for me personally. I wanted to see more of a break to look for that short trade. At this point, I was happy to place a pending short order. So I did have a pending short order at this level, at this inside bar. Uh, and then what happened? Well, let's see. Unfortunately, I wasn't tagged in and the price continued to the downside. After this candle, I removed my pending short order because same as on the Aussie and the US dollar, I didn't want to get tagged in by just one candle. That would be, for me, a momentum shift. So this would not fit my plan. This one candle would engulf the prior three candles, which, uh, which I classify as a momentum shift. And that is exactly what happened. I would get tagged in with these two candles and you can see that I would also get stopped out. So let me just put the, put the risk to reward tool. I would have a 10 pip uh, or 12 pip stop loss and would get stopped out. So really good. I followed my plan here. Uh, as I said, this was too far for me to take that break and retest entry. I wanted to see a nice clean ascending where the price struggles to reach my entry point. I didn't see that. I actually saw a momentum shift. And then what happened? Well, let's see. We broke the high retraced, left a huge wick broke the low retraced left a large wick this is signaling to me a range so i am expecting to see that larger range especially since it is monday and tuesday uh, i'm expecting for the market to consolidate a bit if we do get a clean descending i will look for a reversal to the upside and then a long trade if we see a nice ascending structure i will look for a reversal to the, to the downside if we get a large impulse up, I will look for a flag or a large impulse down. I will also look for a flag. I would really like to see a large impulse down since that would signal to me that this downtrend is continuing and that this may be just a pause before we get that nice large impulse to the downside. Also, what I like is we got a huge wick to the upside signaling to me weakness and that the price really can't go to the upside that it, it is struggling so this is indicating to me that there is a high probability we will continue with this overall downtrend and as i said if we get a large impulse down i will definitely look for a flag or maybe sort of a break and retest trade that's about it um really happy with the aussie trade and let's see what monday and tuesday will bring us i'm expecting for the market to consolidate as i said so I will see you guys tomorrow and until then be careful and look for only large impulses and some nice clean momentum.